here we are we start the job before starting anything safety comes first so please be so kind and use a pair of goggles safety glasses when you do soldering it's not supposed to be dangerous however cutting terminals they can jump into your eyes and when you solder the little flux present in the solder may also jump be very careful about that please use a pair of safety glasses okay now here in front of you is the little uh, plastic bag containing the components we dump on here to see what we have so this is a uh, uh, battery support we are going to prepare the components for working. This one, I'm going to cut off the two legs and quickly removing just a bit of the insulation. I'm going to prepare this cable right away even if we are far from mounting it because I want it to be ready for the moment I'm going to attach to my project very well I put it aside next this is the sticker It sticks very well on both sides. I also prepare it. I don't want to lose it. So I'm sticking it on one side because this is going to be the side on the battery. Remaining is the one for my project. Next, I identify here the uh, microcontroller. I remove it and on the other side, I have the 8-pin socket, I remove it as well. Next thing, resistors. I should have here three resistors, okay? And the three resistors are two resistors of one kilo ohm each, brown, black, and red, the colors. These ones I'm going to mount for my project. If it is going to be used on the North American continent, I only need these two resistors. If it is used in Europe, I also need a third resistor, which is brown, black, orange. This is 10 kilo. At this moment, I leave it aside. Then I have a capacitor here. It's an electrolytic capacitor. So it has a polarity. This is 220 microfarad at uh, 6 volts, 6.3 volt. And uh, this one is going to be uh, uh, mounted on the printed board. Be careful because you cannot mount it randomly. So when I fold the terminals, I'm going to have the white band with the negative sign on my right. I put this one aside too. Then I'm going to deal with the four infrared diodes. So be careful, any diode, including the LEDs and the infrareds, they have a polarity. Um, the manufacturer uses the wider terminal, the larger terminal as a support for the semiconductor itself. And this is marking the cathode. So here I'm going to hold it exactly like this and I'm going to fold it. I'm going to do the same for the second one. I'll always be careful when folding to make sure I don't fold it on the wrong side. So I align it with the wider terminal to my right. And then I'm holding it right here and folding it. 
and the last one here very well so I have my four LEDs infrared diodes already prepared here is the frequency resonator this one is helping uh, my microcontroller working here I have a standard LED and uh, I put it over here here I found in the box a six pin uh, connector this is only going to be useful if I want to reprogram the microcontroller. It won't be the case since you order the whole project, the whole kit from Adafruit or from Abra Electronics. You don't need to do anything because the microcontroller comes already pre-programmed. So I don't think you are going to be ever uh, in need to reprogram it. This is a very tiny uh, 0.1 microfarad capacitor, an additional filtering for the microcontroller power supply terminals. This one is a PNP transistor, the only PNP in the box, and the code is 2907. I prepared this one as well, so I remove the paper on the terminals. And then I finally have the four NPN transistors. As you can see, the terminals, they come aligned uh, um, straight but I actually need them in a triangle so I pick up the one in the middle I fold it a bit and I make the whole arrangement a kind of triangle and I'm going to do this for all the four of them is going to help me later on so I fold it just a bit and I make the three terminals a triangle I still have two more to do. So you see, it's very easy. It's not taking a big effort to fold them. And the last one. Now, all my parts are actually prepared for work, uh, excepting for the two one kilo ohm resistor. I'm going to also fold the resistors like this. And like that, one of them. And the second one on the other side. And actually, I'm starting with these two ones because the principle is a very simple one. If we take a look on any such uh, printed board, you should start with the components having the lowest height, okay? I placed one resistor and then the second one right here. For those of you uh, wanting to use the project in Europe, as you can notice, there is here another place for a resistor. Here you are going to place the 10 kilo ohm resistor, okay? For me, I don't need it. So now, we solder one terminal of each resistor. Why only one terminal? Because we want to watch the position of the resistors is there in the good place. If they are, then we're going to use the cutter. I'm always holding the terminals when cutting. This way I make sure I prevent them jumping. Even if you don't do this, if you just cut the terminals without holding with the, with the finger, at least never direct the terminals to your eyes because they may jump. Once I remove them, I have access to solder the remaining terminals. That's exactly what I'm doing now. So for both resistors, then I make sure there is no solder excess on the board. So I incline a bit the printed board by using the gravity. The melted solder is going to stick to my uh, iron tip. The two resistors are mounted. 
everything looks fine to me. If you take a look around to see what's going to be the next component in terms of height, I'm going to pick up the tiny 0.1 microfarad, which is coming very close, actually next to the IC socket. I'm soldering one terminal, exactly as I did to the resistors. Now I'm taking a look at the capacitor position. Now is in a good position. I soldered the second terminal. Maybe this is the most delicate component to solder, simply because the pads on the printed board are the smallest ones. Be careful. I'm holding the terminals with my fingers, so I'm preventing them from jumping. Now, this one was just a bit higher than the resistors, but then I'm going to start mounting the infrared diodes I prepared already. I pick up the two in the middle, darker ones. Remember, the darker ones, they have a narrow beam. And this is why they come in the middle. I solder exactly as before one terminal of each. I check the position of the two diodes. If they look okay. And if they do, then I can cut the terminals. Always hold them with my fingers. and solder the remaining terminal. Then I spread the solder on the pad. This is going to prevent later on the pad from oxidizing. I'm going to mount the external diodes now. One here, and one here. I do exactly as before, one terminal at a time. One terminal here, one terminal here. I check the position of the diodes to be parallel with the other ones. And then I take care of the terminals. I cut them shorter. And then I solder the remaining terminal for each. As before, I spread the solder around. on the pads. I'm going to do the same on the other side of the board to make sure they have a nice connection, mechanical and electrical. So it's helping the terminals from not folding. Very well, it's done. Next. As you can see, we soldered the four diodes, the two resistors, the capacitor. If we take a look around, what's going to be the next uh, part to solder, I'm gonna pick up the socket of the uh, integrated circuit. 
of the microcontroller. As you can see, it has a notch right here where I have my finger. It has to align with the notch right here on the printed board. And then we turn it upside down. We solder as before one terminal. And we make sure it's aligned. You see, it's not perfectly aligned. So I'm going to hold it and pushing it with my finger and by hitting it just a bit. Then I'm going to make sure it's aligned. Now everything is fine. A little trick about soldering uh, uh, integrated circuit sockets. You don't go for the adjacent terminal, you jump one. So this way preventing it from overheating, then I pass on the other side of it and I jump one, you see? And then I'm coming back and then I'm coming on the other side and I jump and so on. So at the end, all the four, all the four terminals per side, so all the eight are soldered. The notch is aligned, okay? Next is going to be the ceramic resonator, the bluish guy here, it has three terminals. It has no polarity. It comes right here close to the eight pin socket of the microcontroller because this is going to deliver the microcontroller clock frequency. I soldered one pin of it. I take a look, I evaluate the position, looks fine. I can then solder the remaining ones. Job done. Next component to solder is going to be the little push button, the touch push button. So I put it just into place, but there is a little trick here, I don't push it. I'm gonna use the pair of tweezers and take a look. I put the tweezers around it, around the button actually, and I press it. It comes perfectly in place without touching the plastic knob because it's very sensitive. I do exactly as before. I'm checking its position to make sure it's aligned. It looks like being perfectly aligned. And now I can solder the other terminals. Good, another one. Next to solder is going to be the electrolytic capacitor because I prepared it before. You take a look, the longer terminal here is the positive and the negative is marked by the white band. So I place it right here on the board. I turn it upside down and I solder. Then I cut the excess. Okay, good job. What's remaining? The little green LED. As always, the larger terminal here, I'm gonna use it for the cathode. And remember, the position is marked. There is a positive marked here on the printed board. This is for the anode. So the cathode is gonna come on the other side. So then, as we did before, we are going to solder one terminal only. We check the position of the LED, if it's aligned. It looks like that. So then I can easily cut the terminals and soldering the second one. Done. The remaining components to solder are the transistors. The only one having the terminals remaining aligned in a row is the PNP, 
and I'm starting with this one to make sure I won't misplace it. Let's say I'm going to sort of the base first. I'm taking a look at it. It looks very well aligned. So then I can solder the remaining two. Very well, the emitter and the collector are now sold, soldered. I cut the excess. So now, the remaining NPN transistors, there are four of them. Remember, we arranged the terminals to be aligned in a kind of little triangle because it's gonna be very easy to place them now. Let's say one here. I'm gonna leave a room between transistors. So I'm gonna solder the first and the third. I'm starting with the base. It's not a, it's not a point starting with the base, but it's just the tip of the triangle. For me, I check to make sure they are aligned. So if they are aligned, I can solder the remaining terminals. Okay. I jump from one transistor to the other. Very well. Now I can carefully cut the excess, the remaining terminals. Very well, two remaining. One here, and there is only one spot remaining. Voila. I start with the base, as we did to the first two of them. We're checking the position. Yeah, they look well aligned. They look well aligned to me. So then, we solder the remaining two terminals. Of each transistor, done. And what's the easy part? To cut the excess. Very well done. Hey, guess what? We only we are only missing one thing. This, the support for the battery. So what I'm going to do? I'm going to pass the two wires through the little hole is provided on purpose. Here, then I'm going to make a little knot to make sure that the two wires are going to be protecting on a long term from overfolding. And now, as it happened to the diodes and to the other components, the capacitor having a polarity, is the same for the two wires. We don't solder them randomly. We notice right here, close to the diode is a positive sign. So here I'm going to plug my red wire. So the red is for positive. So by placing it here, we're going to solder it. This is going to be the positive for the battery. And we're going to do the same for the negative, which is right on the other side of the diode. Right here. So 
so we solder the black wire as well done we check if there is any wire excess and if it is we cut it off this is done so now the moment of truth the moment of truth is mount batteries before attaching the board to the uh, battery uh, socket because if there is anything wrong we still get a chance to uh, correct oh to not forget we have to place the microcontroller on the socket because without the brain the little project won't work so we pay attention we have here in the top of it where i have my nail we have uh, the id for the pin number one a little notch we align it to the notch on the socket okay and when they come aligned we just push it into the socket now it is so then we can focus on the little detail remaining placing the batteries you're going to notice that when placing the batteries i'm going to show this to you you're going to take a look at the little led if the project was done properly uh, placing the battery because the project does not have a power switch the led is starting to blink right away can you see it? So now the little uh, microcontroller started to scan the codes and my TV set went already off. It's going to continue blinking until it's scanning all the codes, regardless that in the meantime, your TV set went off, okay? And if you don't press the button again in the next two minutes, two minutes later, the whole project is going to shut down by itself, actually it's entering in standby. This way saving uh, uh, the battery. So I'm gonna just clean a bit here. And preparing the TV set on. Because the next step we're going to do is going to check our project closer to the TV. So we pick it up, we put the TV set back on using its original remote, the, the TV set goes on, and as soon as it goes on, we can see all the picture. Very well. Then we pick up our little project here. And when we press the button, we watch. I press the button and the TV set went off. Imagine, we do it one more time. We use the original remote, we put it on. The picture comes back on. We pick up here and we can take a look at the LED. It's still looking for codes. No big deal, we're gonna wait until it's finishing to scan all the TV codes it knows, okay? But instead of a reset, we can press it any time again, and it's going to restart emitting codes. When the one for your TV set is found, the TV set is shut off. So this is the TV Bigar. Be ready for the next project. Thank you very much, guys. See you next time. Bye-bye.